All right, welcome everyone to this panel discussion uh, after the play. All right, welcome everyone to this panel discussion uh, after the play 999. My name is Peter Wieg, I'm from Budapest, Hungary. I am going to moderate this panel discussion. I am leading a climate action awareness raising project in Hungary titled Mashfelfok, which literally translates to 1.5 degrees Celsius. First and foremost, I would like to thank you, the organizers, HowlAround, for this opportunity uh, for, for showing the play and uh, and having us here for this, for this discussion. But before our, I introduce our panelists, I would like to encourage everybody to participate uh, with questions or remarks in the chat. We will be happy to answer them. We are planning uh, this panel discussion for about 40 minutes. So as for our distinguished guest, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Marcel Bélai, who is the founder and artistic director of the Chance of the Hunter Ensemble, co-director of the performance, and he's also a freelance director. Marcel, hello. Hi, everyone. Thank and you for I having me. And I would also like to welcome Gabor Viktor Kozma, who is also the founder, co-artistic director of the Chance of the Hunter Ensemble, director of the performance, what we just saw, uh, he also holds a PhD and an assistant teacher at the University of Babes Boye. Welcome. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Peter. And just before uh, I uh, jump into the questions, uh, nowadays experts fancy the word polycrisis, that we live <laughs> in the time of polycrisis. We have uh, simultaneously many crises all around the globe. Just think about the energy crisis, the cost of living crisis, uh, the war in Ukraine. We have our domestic crises uh, in both sides of the Atlantic and uh, and globally. And as a dome above it all, we have the ecological and climate crisis. And uh, I just want to emphasize that the intern government, the IPCC, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, released its synthesis report uh, in March, uh, summarizing the best available scientific knowledge about climate change. And I just want to share my screen for that. Just a second. Can you all see my screen? Yes. So I, I urge everyone, if you want to look into the science, the scientific part uh, of the story, you should hit up the IPCC report. And I just want to show one figure uh, from, the, for, from the summary for policymakers. You can see here, here all the risks uh, uh, connected to climate change from water scarcity, infectious diseases, uh, uh, the degradation of crops and yields, et cetera, et cetera. But I really want, what I really want to show you is this part of the graph, which can, which tells the story that uh, what we saw in the play could become somewhat of a reality if we follow the business as usual scenario uh, and uh, don't turn down global heating until the end of end of the century. And uh, the thing is that uh, the the babies that were born in and are born in these years are going to experience the full effects of of, uh, of climate change and the climate crisis during their whole period of their lives. Just think about Betty, uh, shown uh, in the play previously. And um, the problem is that the science is crystal clear for for a long time about uh, climate change we know that we are causing it we know the risks and we also have the solutions at hand uh, to th do something about it the thing is that we are not doing enough and not uh, fast enough and that creates a very vague scary uh, future for all of us filled with anxiety and I think that uh, maybe later uh, in the discussion we can talk about climate anxiety. But for my first question would be to you guys is that, okay, I'm just going to stop the sharing now. <laughs> so the first question would be that um, science, climate science and climate change itself is a more solution-oriented, didactic uh, approach while art 
and especially theater is about uh, problem centric, leaving questions open, not solving them. Why did you choose this topic? Isn't wasn't it dangerous to choose this kind of let's say boring topic uh, for a play? <laughs> um, well, uh, first of all, I think the topic is isn't boring at all. It's really inspiring. It's um, it's full of questions in it, uh, which uh, artistically can inspire, I think, every, anybody and definitely inspired us. Um, but yeah, we faced it with the beginning when we tried to get closer to the topic, to closer to the subject, especially in a device theater way. So uh, we needed to devise all the uh, materials we use uh, during the performance. Um, or my be it was my idea to come up with this kind of performance, uh, but I uh, felt from the beginning and with Marcel and with the director Christian Kiliti and with the costume and set designer uh, Rujano Suke and with the music uh, composer um, Mark Pastor, uh, we were thinking collectively from the beginning that how should we form it to a theater subject, not to activism, not to not to um not to solution oriented topic um and uh, there was a clear moment i think when we find the sentence uh it, it sounded like uh this that uh, for uh the future um mankind um or humankind uh burns their own future so owning uh the things uh and and there's a kind of greed in it also, but somehow it's really um, out of love, out of um, mankind or humankind would like to uh, do the best for their children, uh, for the next generations. So they start to um, gain more and more and through just this process. Question. Just yeah. one quick question. So this is not activism. You wouldn't mm. say that this display has anything to do with climate activism. I wouldn't say no. Um, well, I, 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 yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking thinking about that. In my dictionary, activism is that means uh, you are for something, protest for something, or um, yes, protest for something. But in this case, in our show, we just try to show some people's life in the future how we how we think about it uh, based on the articles uh, which we were uh, reading about. So I think there is a difference between uh, activism and to show or represent something or let those characters uh, to represent them. Yes, so, so basically we find it that there in, in the center of the topic, there is um, the, 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 there is the human being who would like to do the best, but uh, because of this intention, uh, immediately works against uh, her or himself. Uh, we found it really absurd. We found it uh, a humorous at the point. So the, I, I think there's a great sense of humor in it, in this topic, even if it's like a grotesque sad humor. Um, but on the daily basis, yeah, we would like to continue our life. We don't want to uh, have disasters in our life. We would like to avoid them, of course. Uh, but through working against it or through working um, for a better life, we burn our better life. And yeah, this, this was our basic core idea. Mm -hmm. And how was the creative process? So you found this topic, you deemed it interesting. Uh... How is the creative process of making, putting climate change on stage? Uh, first of all, we did the research. Um, as Marta mentioned, uh, we started to read about the topic as much as we could. Uh, it was back in 2019, so um, it was one IPCC report before. Uh, after the 18th one, it started to be, for me, a really personal theme. Um, and we started to speak with um, with um, people from the field. We we uh, had a discussion with uh, Greenpeace Hungary, 
um, they shared uh, some material with us. They they um, supported us with great care uh, throughout the process. And then we started to come up with uh, little scenes, little ideas, and we started to to devise it with the actors together. Um, so basically, we started to ask them, and um, we started to uh, suggest them different kind of improvisational situations. And uh, we trained together through viewpoints also. Um, and through this process, uh, we found some materials. And then later on, we started to, you know, find a structure for it, find our main character, uh, Donald Tembro for it, and um, piece by piece. I think there, there's at a point it was like a four hours long reading material. So we really needed to more than just... more than 120 pages. Yeah, yeah we needed to cut out. Most Gabor, of it. If, if you mentioned the viewpoints improv improvisation technique, maybe can you say just two, three sentences about that to make it clear what what that is? Wow, sure. Uh, so Be we sorry, because, because uh, I, I just wanted sure. to I think that's our the most uh, interesting thing in this process. Uh, viewpoints is um, not like really a technique. They mention it basically as a philosophy originated by uh, Mary Overly. And uh, later on, uh, it was transformed by Anne Bogart and Tina Lando. Um, it's basically um, decompose the theater materials around us. So uh, maybe it's easier to, to um, explain it like this. If we would have a glasses, in which we can put different filters, then you can layer uh, the different reality around you. So for example, now I'm only focusing on the forms in the room. And then through forms, I find my solutions in my improvisation. And there are different uh, viewpoints in the six or in the nine vocabulary um, to follow. So would you say that you started off with sketches because uh... Uh, we can see many stories in one play, like, uh, I don't know, at least at least four or more. I, I, more. I, I lost count. Yeah. I lost count how many stories are sim simultaneously happening. So you started working on one, then the other came and then, then you just mixed it up and and in, tried to combine it into one play. Uh, the basic core of the scenes, I think, is need and fear. Um, so th this this was a this was a thought which connects all the scenes: uh, fear of uh, not having a child, fear of um, losing uh, losing my love, and I cannot go out because of the obstacles of the weather obstacles. Um, the fear of um, um, how how will I lose the purpose of my life? For for example, for Donald Tamboro. Um So so there is a lot of fears in it and a lot of anxiety. Um, yeah, basically, we follow the subject, I think. So uh, through the different topics we felt touched or inspired by, um, we created the scenes one by one. And then when we had the scenes, we needed to choose, OK, which material would we like to develop more? Which material would we, would we like to cut out? And then at the point, uh, we found our main character, um, which helped us to somehow compose it to not a uh, linear narrative but more like um um how can i say it in english it's, it's to give a structure like... for for it yes but uh, how would you explain the dramaturgy of it it's like uh not separated scenes but it has a character in it it, it has a frame narrative um around it which holds it together but basically the idea that it happens in um, donald Tembro's head uh, just before precision of hibernation. And I had I had the chance to see uh, the play in November 2021, and I, I couldn't notice that I saw a different play uh, playing here, which will be available in the archive uh, later on. So if anybody wants to watch it, it will be available. Um, can you outline the differences between the play that we just saw and the play that is currently existing and uh, you're showcasing? Marcel? Yeah, I think uh, in the second uh, version of this performance, the, as Gabor mentioned, the frame uh, dramaturgy, uh, I think it, it 
it, it's more clear. It's much more clear than before. And uh, well, I think we 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 cut out some some scenes to make it to make it shorter and make it tougher. And uh, I think the end of the show um, has much more anxiety, maybe in the second version in the first but maybe it's just my my opinion yeah it, i i think uh, we cut it out only uh, parts of the scenes not whole scenes um yeah and uh, the cast changed through the years um the beginning the beginning and the end changed drastically so for example the 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 first um recorded voice uh, or, the, or the recorded text is at the end of the performance now and uh, we have the smooth opening for the performance so it's like a countdown until 999 from around 980 985 it depends on the house we play in um so the audience is coming to a counting like in a waiting room and then when it's 999, uh, the light changes and there's no party in the beginning. There's just uh, the first two characters appearing, like if Donald Tambor would fall asleep. Um, I think we centralized more scenes on or around Donald Tambor. So, for example, we have uh, the advertising scene with... Um, with uh, the guy with the really blonde hair uh, who is selling um, bunkers. Um, those uh, Talashop uh, scene uh, is not alone with a mask now, but with Donald Tamburo. Um, and the ending is, well, that's a much more condensed scene now. So uh, it's, it's really just about um, if this guy, uh, Donald, would make this decision to leave everything behind and wait for a better future or not, but he makes the decision and it leaves. And then we hear this um, recorded text about, basically about selfishness or ego, which I think is one of the main drive also behind uh, all the subject we try to cover. Thank you. HowlRound labeled the play as an apocalyptic dark comedy. And you guys also mentioned that uh, uh, when you were uh, diving into the topic, uh, you searched for tools uh, to use the power of, of humor and sarcasm, even if it's grotesque. Uh, so do you consider this as a comedy? If I want to tell my friends that, hey, you should watch this comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you agree with that? Because uh, if I would say this is a comedy about climate change, and I think that uh, many people who, who know something about the topic would go like, what? what? What's so funny about climate change? It's doom and gloom everywhere. So you consider this a comedy? Uh, yes, I, I, I think we would consider it not in a classical sense uh, of a comedy, uh, but more like a grotesque sense um apocalyptic dark dark comedy it's it's a genre um but basically this um this this uh title like or tag like apocalyptic dark comedy came from voila um festival um they suggested for it's uh, for us and we really liked it because it also brings in the um, the grotesque or absurd way uh, and the humor there is humor in it if we see humor as uh as an empathetic um phenomena or or quality maybe quality um because um when we see uh people struggling for something but at the same time um making everything wrong with it uh, there is a kind of um loving humor in it i think what do you think Martin? yeah yeah i i can totally agree with it most of the scenes we we can see that how people try to prepare for the apocalypse and it, it's an impossible impossible thing or uh, how they try to manage their life in this apocalyptic circumstances and of course, they are failing, and uh, yeah. What, what else? It, if it's not a comedy, <laughs> I like also, to. Also, hmm? oh, sorry. 
Um, also, one one uh, of the humorous part in it, it's like, which is also scary, um, that none of the scenes are fully fictional. So basically, I, I think none of them are fictional. There, there, there is uh, um, real stories, real um, real uh, brochures behind it. So for example, uh, we were shocked when we find uh, brochures for a different kind of disaster bunker. Uh, for I want to just please elaborate because I'm looking forward to my bunker if I retire. Yeah, sure. Two and, years. And you can you can order it in any any uh model you would like to so if how 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 you're ordering a car now um if you would like to order a car of course um uh those are just the same structure just the same images just the same logic to sell it to you so consumer society covers everything uh which is already i think absurd um this means the, i can the, get a cheaper bunker from china sorry probably probably <laughs> uh well just don't try it out please peter okay, uh, sorry, sorry. You to us. sorry oh, about sorry. that sorry about that no. i had I, i'm terrible with jokes <laughs> so uh about um, i love that what you said that uh that humor requires uh at least some amount of empathy i i, I really like that and uh, i can reflect to it that um, many people say that uh uh, irony reflects a higher level of intelligence, but uh, about um, humor. What? Let's let's talk about humor and climate change and how it can be or should be adapted uh, to stage. Um, do Do you think that it can be counterproductive uh, to use use a humorous tone about this whole topic, uh, or this is some kind of uh, therapy session for for human beings to to deal with this issue which is terrifying and seemingly unsolvable which is of course not true according to the best available science but we feel like that it's overwhelming in our lives so did you choose uh, this tone of humor this dark apocalyptic humor intentionally or it just came naturally you know, how you closed on to the subject of climate adapting climate change to stage as far as i remember it was it was a choice but i think it's also a language how we we form our place so uh i i personally believe that um even in the deepest dramas in the history like written dramas there is a great sense of humor just look at shakespeare so um there always should be i think uh to find release to find to to, to not to be um suffocated by the subject but to reflect on the subject humor is a great way to to step out uh take distance from the subject and then uh getting back closer emotionally uh, how do you remember, Marta? Yeah, I, I think uh, humor, in, in one hand, yes, but in, on the other hand, the humor comes pretty naturally during the process, because uh, when when we read articles, when we had discussions about this topic, we, we as I remember, we felt a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and that's the way how we try to manage it in our inner selves you know so it, on the other hand it comes pretty naturally as i mentioned but what uh, you asked before uh, that the humor peter the humor can be counterproductive i think yes because when we have we have the tension uh about this topic in ourselves and when we have this to see a scene from from the performance and then we laughed the tension goes out in one hand but i think if we would like to do something be a productive person i think we have to manage this tension so in the other hand yes humor can can brings you in a statement where where you can start to to be productive because you are uh, you feel yourself more easier without tension 
So basically, if we want to have effective climate action, we shouldn't be creating memes, but go out and protest and uh, and uh, do something about it. But as for a stage play, it's much more um, much more better way to make it more in a creative way, exciting in an artistic way, because you just can't go out to the stage and there's a problem, do something about it, because then it's not real art. It's not art. No, I, I, I think it's not art and uh, this has different purposes. So activism should make change um, somehow in society, somehow in global or, or uh, social issues. Um, and theater should find some questions. Wow. Questions. First I, I, of all, I, I would be more sentimental, uh, sentimental in this case, like more, more um, um, food for the soul. It's it's a great big word, but somehow yes, somehow uh, find the emotional and the mental. Um, yeah, it's it's more like an emotional and mental space theater for me. Um, to to think together, to feel together, to be together, to share space and time together, to be out there. It's not uh, and, and and do activism. It's it's not about share space and time. It's not about the quality of the time. It's about the aim of the time. That we would like to reach that. Um, if we reach, we are successful. If we fail, we at least try. In theater, there's no win or lose. Uh, we can be together and find some self growth in it through it. Hopefully. Thank you. I just put uh, an article from the Guardian uh, in the chat. Uh, on the whole round platform, which actually states that uh, humor can be useful for climate action as well, just because uh, you mentioned like uh, re it relieves tension and brings the topic to the, those people, those parts of society that would would avoid it if it would use the same tone like the the gloom and doom, which is of course. Mm -hmm. Well, true, but it's it's uh, it's overwhelming. So actually, humor can be also helpful helpful for climate action as well. And if some of the viewers know the Juice Media on YouTube, I highly recommend check it out. They are roasting the Aust Australian government all the time in a very funny way and also informative way. So there are many ways to to approach such a uh, such a subject. And I want to um, get to climate anxiety because you we mentioned tensions and how this tone can be useful like relieving this kind of uh, uh, tensions we can see that uh, climate anxiety is not some uh, uh, luxury hobby of, uh, of an east coast american or someone living in uh, budapest uh, upper class but it's actually a growing thing uh, globally which affects people even there are growing number between uh, amongst young people who don't want uh, to have children because of climate anxiety they feel that uh, they cannot provide a safe future uh, for their for their children which is like we never seen this before i mean people had babies in during the cold war even during the second world war so this is something that uh, we have never experienced as a race before um and my question would be that uh, you said that when you were looking into the topping and you you did your research, which is, by the way, excellent. I think that uh, this is a very good approach to see the science, look into the numbers, what is really going to happen and then start the creative process. So you mentioned anxiety. How did you feel when you when you encountered this horrible uh, future scenario? And how did it affect the play itself? And do you have any strategies in your own life when you want to combat uh, combat uh, climate anxiety? Well, shortly, bad. In longer version, very bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, basically, um, it came from also the, the, the choosing the topic was a selfish decision uh, because uh, we or I already felt this kind of anxiety and there's a question always, what can I do? You can do activism. Great. Uh, do I see any effect? No. Um, I can do my own changes in my life. I can reduce meat eating. I can be more uh, careful about uh, my um, 
um, my habits, what do I buy? Um, I can be more um, aware, how do I travel and so on. So there are some small steps, which makes me still shit uh, or shitty. So um, then came uh, the last idea that, okay, I'm a theater artist. I should do something with the topic. So it's also a selfish decision how to handle the topic, speak about it, speak through the topic about the problems, about the questions, um, raise awareness, um, at least for a few people. I think theater is not the best way to raise awareness. I think movies, films, um, even um, social media is much better. Um, but you reach few people, uh, you can share your anxiety with, through, with, with few people and emotions um, inspire great decisions. Basically, as human beings, we decide three emotions. So um, at least we can we can do that. Just a quick question. And um, Marcel, I'm also interested in your answer as well. But just a quick question. Did your play triggered a discussion uh, in the artistic community or in the theater community uh, in Hungary or in Europe where you went uh, and uh, and uh, played 999? triggered a discussion about climate change itself that what did you did they t uh, tell you anything about that this was a great idea or this was a bad idea to put on stage did it move people that uh, wow these guys came up with a play that actually uh, puts uh, the climate crisis in focus or not Marta? well uh when we went to London with this performance after the show, there was a, also kind of a panel uh, discussion uh, with the audience. And there, uh, if I remember, well, the, they, they were kind of excited after the show that they have the opportunity to talk about this topic based on a theater show. In Hungary, uh, I didn't uh, participate in the, the panel uh, uh, discussion after the show. So I don't know what was the reaction there, but uh, in the theater community, I do not really remember if other companies try to, to manage with, with this topic. Gabor? Yes. Yes, there are some some piece uh, about the subject. K2 had an opera about it, which also went to the London Festival one a uh, year before us or two years before us. Um, mm, there are some dance performances. Um, I think Duda Eva, Eva Duda um, did a dance performance about uh, climate crisis. Um, but oh, and the leather art company also. Leather, 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 yes. leather art company just uh, made a devised piece last yeah, year. So um, well, yeah, yeah that, 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 only the independent companies. Yes, that's true. It, 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 it's an <laughs> interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, I I I, I think device theater process, uh, especially in Central or Eastern Europe, is still like an independent company ish thing. Um, but but more and more uh, state theaters or repertoire theaters opening up to this as far as i see but uh, so yeah uh, the topic appears now it's it's not just oh we we found out like this should this should be a theater topic no there are there are artists who are thinking and feeling um similar like us and working on these um but i i still feel this um subject is way too low represented not just in theaters, but also in um, in uh, general talking. Um, but when I speak with youngsters, teenagers, we have um, a drama class uh, in Budapest. Um, they feel this really, really as one of the most urgent topic for themselves. So, um, as far as I see, we should we should work as a community and as a theater community or as global community to, to raise more awareness to this. And just to circle back, because Marcel, I also want to hear your anxiety attacks about uh, the topic. How, yeah. how, 
how did you feel how did you react when you when you encountered this amount of information and how did you channel it into the play yeah actually i i feel myself in a very fortunate situation i think gabor and me we are making theater and it's a pretty uh good situation to manage our our tensions our anxiety because during our works our daily works we can think about that we can uh discuss about that so it's it's pretty how can i say better it makes it, it makes much more easier because my daily work uh lets me think about it thank you since we're approaching the last 10 minutes i just want to encourage the audience again if you have any questions or remarks feel free to put it in the chat and we're going to read it in and talk about it and uh while we are waiting for the first question to arrive i just wanted to ask you guys because gabor you mentioned that uh, you as an individual can do a lot of things to change the system or do less harm but you still in the end of the day you still feel bad and anxious about it and the UNFCCC, the United Nations Framework uh, Convention on Climate Change, which was signed by uh, all the countries in the world, uh, states that uh, uh, climate change is a, a global threat to humanity and ecosystems. And we have um, shared but differentiated responsibilities, which means that uh, Let's just say that we also have some responsibility what what um, the president of the United States or Russia or China or India have more responsibility or big corpor corporations have more responsibility. Uh, when you were doing, uh, uh, when you were thinking and writing uh, uh, the play, did this play any part uh, in your thoughts that you want to, uh, I don't know, put this uh, on stage as well, because you mostly focused on individual stories. Um, well, we had some um, some signs, uh, some theater signs pointing out of this context, uh, context. but we, would, we uh, wanted to focus on the individuals because through the individual, uh, we can find um, the connection um, through, through more global systems. Um, it starts to become politics or it starts to become activism at a point. Uh, of course, the theater has political and 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 um, uh, and, and social aspect. Um, wh where do you make that thin line? It's it's hard and, and it's 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 always an artistic decision. Um, or you go directly to activism and it's also great. Uh, I, 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 I think it's just not our way of communicating to theater. Um, there are some uh, signs, as I mentioned, for example, there's a music composed from different political speeches, uh, spe uh, speeches in it, um, in the performance, um, when there is, how to say, a catwalk uh, on the tables with the plastic foils, um, there is a music um, which there are several politicians speaking in it. Uh, there are uh, the first of all, Greta Thunberg um, have uh, her fav her uh, famous speech like "How dare you?" This is the beginning sentence of that music composed by Mark uh, Pastor. But we didn't want it to point at anybody like "Do it" or "You should do" or "It's your responsibility." Um, this kind of aggression, I think, won't won't work in in this context i'm not really sure aggression work in any context uh direct um direct messages can work but um pointing is already like there, there, there's a great aggression in it i think the end of the art uh just one 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 thing uh, is that uh, gabor mentioned that the the thin line between the theater or art product and between activism and i think it also depends where uh, where it, where is this line depends on the audience how how the audience uh read uh the show where 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 is the line in the audience so it's it's uh it's moving from from every performance 
And did you receive any feedback uh, during uh, the shows or after the shows from the audience or from other professionals, how they read the play, how they interpreted it? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, well, that's it, that there's a great diversity in it. So uh, from from uh, from leaving immediately and, and don't even want to speak about it, uh, that kind of reaction through, through long, long discussions, uh, like uh, how, how it made uh, different associations. And I think this kind of dramaturgy, this dream dramaturgy is basically invites um, the audience to uh, use their uh, own associations on the topic, find their own enter point. Uh, the, it, this dramaturgy is not like you should read the story from here. There is a narrative frame, as I mentioned, uh, through which you can you can have a narrative, but uh, you have you can have different entering points through the play. And uh, there was uh, one of our friends of the company who started to uh, make a map of all the connections with all the characters, like in uh, like pointing out ev every little re uh, reference between in the play. And we were like, what? a hack how did you do it I, I, and th that that was his uh, first um time seeing the performance um s some of our some of my students um were, saw the performance uh back in uh, cluj napoca um and we we had of course uh, discussions about it which is hard um you know uh speaking with your students um about the play uh which is yours um, so I, I encourage them to try to step back and speak about it as if uh, it would be an uh, unknown play for us. Um, and then started to share my and their own experiences and uh, how we started to analyze. I think this piece is really which you need to think about to find those connections, which makes you feel, ah, OK. There's a chestnut in it. Ah, okay. The, now, now I hear the reference, and now I can do something with that scene. If um, people are not, if uh, somebody from the audience does not like to think about a scene or a context out of that um, dramaturgy, uh, dramaturgical context, it might be boring, or it might be too too messy, too too harsh, too fast. Um, but I think it it starts to open up when uh, the reference is opening, and we found that uh, youngsters are much more um, um, open to this kind of dramaturgy. Uh, teenagers, uh, people in their twenties, um, because. I think there is a great family guy generation in this in this um, in this time, uh, which you see is like this is the dramaturgy. There is a scene, and then th there's a cut in it. You see like thirty seconds of a different scene, and then you go back to the story. Um, we try to follow this kind of uh, time management in the performance. Actually, when I saw the play first time in Budapest, I felt a little, a little bit like a boomer. So uh, <laughs> I'm 37. So uh, you, you would you say that this play targets the young audience, or it's much more, uh, I don't know, easier to process or to accept or to connect with this kind of tone, visual tone and uh, artistic tone? for people in their 20s or even just I, I think it is yeah it is hard, hard to answer it because uh, i think the topic asks for this uh, kind of dramaturgy i mean ask for this asks for this aesthetic of the dramaturgy because if you if we try to put this topic as gabor mentioned in a linear story in a linear dramaturgy maybe in the end we we got an answer beside the question so i i think the topic brings this kind of dramaturgy i i, I also feel that there, there can be great great choices through a linear dramaturgy in this subject but but yeah, these were our decision. This is our personality. This is our, our artistic view now. So that's how we could do it. Um, for 
that, that does it goes for teenagers and more like uh, people in the 20 that's a great question we had uh, i think it was the performance in the truffle when you were there peter in the discussion where there was a lady in their eight in her 80s and she loved it she 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 was really excited about it um in london i felt uh it really found its audience because for them this kind of uh, broken dramaturgy this kind of um fast cuts between scenes uh, they were used to it really much so um I, I was really happy that we had the chance to go to the Voila festival um back in budapest it's um it's confusing sometimes uh students are really quiet and then they just really really um enthusiastic at the end or later two days after the performance they they wrote us or through their teachers they sent some messages um I would say it more about taste, theater taste, not about age. If if you like theater, which doesn't opens up for you easily, um, you need to work on it in your own. I think you can like it. Uh, but if you if you would like to s s get something which you can read, which is which gives you exactly one by one every detail, and you can follow it, um, then then it's maybe not for you. Thank you. Uh, just a quick remark from me uh, about climate anxiety, and you mentioned that uh, uh, theater is good because you're in a shared space and you can create a community there. And I just want to say that uh, experts say that uh, one of the best ways is how to deal with climate anxiety is to belong to a community, because then you realize that, wow, everybody else has got these feelings and uh, about uh, this huge problem that we have. And also doing something, anything can ease uh, uh, tension uh, uh, within you regarding this topic. But for those people who are already Googling the bunkers, I just want to say that uh, it's not going to help you because uh, if our civilization collapses, you won't be safe there as those guys weren't safe in the bunker as we saw in the play. So I would urge everybody to to uh, go go out uh, uh, to the internet, find relevant and uh, scientifically approved information. The IPCC would be the best for that. And I'm, I know I'm uh, the bringer of bad news, but if we want system change, we need uh, not just an individual approach, but also a community approach. So when you go go vote, when you go to vote, when you go to when you go shopping, you also have to keep in mind what are you pay what are you paying for and what kind of decision makers you're keeping in power so but more, first and foremost what i wanted to emphasize is to belong to a community and i think that uh, this play um, showed that uh, you can create this kind of community in a closed space of theater so that would be my uh, ending remark i don't know uh, gabor marcel do you have any comments about that just saying again, thank you for uh, thanks for the hall round uh, for supporting us uh, with the streaming and with the discussion. We really appreciate it, and thank you, Peter, for the moderation. I also would like to thank you, the organizers, and please remember that uh, the uh, the recording of the play and this discussion will be available in the archives. So, if you haven't seen it uh, uh, or you would just want to show it to your friends, you feel feel free to do so. So. Thank you, Gabor. Thank you, Marcel. And thank you for the organizers. Thank you. Thank you.